Aging and disease are biochemical processes that happen over many decades. And if we track and optimize well-established biomarkers of organ and systemic health, can aging and disease risk be slowed? That's the central premise of this channel. And with that in mind, two weeks ago, I blood tested for the third time in 2023. So what's my biological age? So here we're looking at data using Dr. Morgan Levine's phenotypic age calculator as a metric of biological age. And if you're interested in measuring your own biological age using Levine's test, that link will be in the video's description. So when using this test, I get a biological age of 34.2 years, which is 16 years younger than my chronological. Now note that for the 10th consecutive test, Quest high sensitivity C-reactive protein measurement was less than 0.3 milligrams per liter. So CRP could be lower than 0.3 milligrams per liter. And rather than looking at blood test data entered into a spreadsheet, screenshots of the blood test report will be included later in the video. Now, in terms of weak spots where I can improve, creatinine was higher than my average of 0.95 milligrams per deciliter since 2015. And similarly, glucose is now in the 90s again for the second consecutive test. So going forward, I'm gonna work on bringing those down and potentially not impacting the other biomarkers. Now, note that this is just one test. For more context, let's have a look at biological age results since 2018. And I have 28 blood tests over that period. And that's what we can see here. So from 2018 to 2019, I only tested three times with an average biological age using Levine's test of 36.1 years. Then in 2020 and 2021, collectively, I measured 12 times with an average of 35.6 years over that two-year span. And then in 2022, over seven blood tests, I significantly reduced my biological age using this test to 33.8 years. And if you missed any of those videos, they're on this channel, so check it out. And then in 2023, we can see that most recent test of 34.2 years, and thus far over three tests, my average pheno age is 33.3 years, so uh, doing pretty well relative to 2022. Now, this isn't the only biological age test that I use. I also use aging.ai, and when entering the 19 biomarkers that are found on aging.ai, I get a biological age, a predicted age of 33 years, which is 17.2 years younger than my chronological. And just like we did for Levine's test, this is only one test. For more context, let's, let's take a look at previous data for aging.ai age, which is what we can see here. I have 40 blood tests since 2009 for aging.ai. When I first started tracking over three tests over a five-year period, my average aging.ai age was 32 years. And then starting in 2016, I started to test more often, trying to get a more representative view of where my uh, systemic biochemistry was testing 34 times over a seven year period. So about five tests per year. And my average aging.ai age over that seven year span was 29.8 years. Thus far in 2023, we can see the most recent test with that 33 of aging.ai age, which is worse than the first two tests in 2023 of 28 and 27 years. But note that 33, 27 and 28 are still within my range of around 26, or actually of 26 to 34 years, since 2016. So uh, although it got worse, it's still within my normal range. And with that in mind, in 2023, my average aging.ai age thus far over those three tests is 29.3 years, which is decent compared to the average of 29.8 years from 2016 to 2022. Now, in terms of room for improvement, glucose and creatinine are also on the aging.ai list, but my tri triglycerides were higher than my average since 2015 of 58, and red blood cells were below my average of 4.85, so going forward, those four biomarkers are front and center for attempting to improve them without affecting potentially affecting anything else. Now, at this point in the video, I then asked the question, what may be contributing to these biological age reductions, including diet and or supplements? And that will be in a future video. I've already got it ready to go, so coming sooner rather than later. But for now, let's dig into the full blood test report. Now, notably absent on this first page is homocysteine. So note that I started serine plus vitamin B6 with the goal of reducing homocysteine. Uh, and it was two grams per day of serine and 11 milligrams per day, which was about three and a half times higher than my previous intake of about three milligrams per day for vitamin B6. And I supplemented with serine and vitamin B6 for 44 of the 49 days that corresponded to this blood test. So uh, I'll actually have this data. In the, in the next video. So did serine plus vitamin B6 reduce homocysteine? And that will probably be midweek uh, next week. For page two, notably absent is DHEA sulfate. And for that question, did vitamin B6 impact 
the NAD concentration, my, uh, my blood levels of NAD, and correspondingly did higher NAD affect DHEA sulfate. And I covered that in an earlier video, why I expected that to be the case. And uh, fortunately, Ginfinity just got my blood sample two weeks after mailing it. Uh, those, those samples should be good for up to a month, so I should have my NAD results sometime soon. Post it first on Patreon. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links and merch that you may be interested in, including discount links for NAD quantification, green tea, epigenetic testing, or microbiome composition, at-home blood testing, diet tracking, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, Buy Me A Coffee. We've also got merch, so if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Trying brand, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.